Okay, great. So hopefully that was ample, ample time to complete the warm up for the day. Let's jump into the lesson. So at this point, please take your notebooks out. Have access to your notebooks throughout the lesson so that you can refer to previous notes that we've taken, but also so that you can write down new and useful information as we go. You should start with the title of the lesson, which is genetics. You should also include the date, which is October 26, 2020. And you should also include that today is Unit 7, Day 1. The objective of today's lesson is to explain the connection between meiosis, protein synthesis, and genetics. The essential question, how does genotype affect phenotype? How does genotype affect phenotype.
Okay. So we define genetics as the study of heredity. And heredity is, of course, related to the word inheritance, which means the process by which genetic material is passed on from parent to child. The process by which genetic material is passed on from parent to child. This is so important because the genes that we receive from our parents ultimately determine most of our traits. <clears throat> I say most because our environment also plays a role. Literally from the time that we are developing inside of our mother, our environment impacts who we become. The foods that your mother eats will impact who you become as you develop inside of her uh, in, in the womb. The chemicals that she is exposed to, her sleep schedule, these all impact who you become. But at the same time, the genes that are a result of the DNA that you get from your mother and the DNA that you get from your father also have a huge role in determining who you become. So there's this interplay, and we're going to talk more about this as the unit goes on, but there will always be an interplay between the genes and the environment. One of my students in my last class asked, what about intelligence? Is that determined by your genes? The answer, of course, is yes. Your genes do, to a certain degree, determine your intelligence, but also, obviously, your experiences and your environment determine your intelligence as well. So there's this interplay. Certain people have stronger neural connections in the parts of their brain that control for things like short-term memory and neural processing and the ability to incorporate new information. And these things contribute to a greater intelligence. But at the same time, people who are able to attend better schools with better teachers, people who enjoy going to school and people who enjoy reading are much more likely to enhance their intelligence, to grow their intelligence. The goal for you all is not to believe that who you are today determines who you will be tomorrow. That's called a fixed mindset. We want to have a growth mindset. We want to believe that at any given point, we can change. We can enhance our intelligence. Now, does anybody remember what the definition of a gene would be? What's the definition of a gene? What is the definition of a gene? Okay, good, Jessica. A gene is a unit of information. It is just a small portion of your DNA. So if we think about, if we had the ability, if I had the ability to take a nerve cell from one of you and go into that nerve cell and look in that nerve cell's nucleus and from that nucleus pull out the DNA that's inside of it, if I were to, you know, meticulously unwind that DNA and unravel it because it would be all coiled and tangled. If I could unwind it, stretch it out in a straight line, it would be two meters long. 
It's about six feet long. So there's six feet of DNA inside every one of your cells. It's just so tightly wound up that it takes up barely any space. But a gene within that DNA is just a very, 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 very small portion of the overall two meters of the overall six feet. I'm not talking about an inch. I'm not talking about a half of an inch. I'm talking about something that is millimeters in length, meaning it takes up just a very, very tiny portion of the DNA. And I have 30,000 genes in my DNA, 30,000. Each gene codes for a protein. So each gene will tell the cell how to make a specific protein. Obviously, not every cell makes every single protein. Most cells only need a specific class of proteins that allow them to do their job. So cells will only turn on the genes that they need. Does this make sense? Okay. So a gene is just a small portion of the DNA. In this case, we're looking, we can see all of this long purple DNA, but the gene is just this small pink section right here. Not a very long section at all. Let's see how much we remember about meiosis so that we can begin to connect that topic to this topic. So meiosis is the process by which blank are created to be used for blank reproduction. Meiosis is the process by which blank are created. So what does meiosis create? You can type it into the chat or you can unmute yourself. What does meiosis create? This is where you should be flipping back in your notes and looking for notes about meiosis. We talked at length about this in unit three. Good, Jessica and Nick, both of you are correct. So Jessica says gametes, that's the word that we're looking for, but Nick, you are correct. I want you to keep that answer in mind. So meiosis is the process by which gametes are created to be used for what kind of reproduction? Sexual, thank you, Alyssa. Meiosis is the process by which gametes are created to be used for sexual reproduction. A primary purpose of meiosis is to create blank cells, which have half the number of blank of the body cells. What do we call it, a cell that has half the number? What do we call a cell that has half the number? The word sounds a lot like half.
Okay, electrochemical. So you're thinking about um, a specific type of signaling, Fanique. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about a type of cell that only, instead of having the full set of DNA, it has half of the set. What do we call that kind of cell? Oh yes, there it is, Jessica, haploid. So haploid cells have half the number of what? What are we talking about? Is it, um, what's, what's the specific word for this type of DNA? <clears throat> they have half the number of what? I'll give you a hint. Your parents have, well, everybody has 46. Human beings have 46. Okay, parent cells. It's not that they have half the number of parent cells, <clears throat> but they have. This is a specific type of DNA that they have. This is chromosomes. Okay, so let me just read this whole thing. Perhaps this is something good to write down if you if you didn't know any of these blanks. Meiosis is the process by which gametes are created to be used for sexual reproduction. A primary purpose of meiosis is to create haploid cells, which have half the number of chromosomes of the body cells. Okay, so if your body cells have 46 chromosomes, then your haploid cells will have 23 chromosomes. They have half the number. Okay, let's keep going. So before the chromosomes split during the cell cycle, homologous chromosomes exchange part of their DNA, a process called blank. What's this called when some of this pink chromosome gets sent over to the purple one and some of the purple chromosome gets sent over to the pink one? What's that called? when they exchange just a little bit of their genetic material. What is that process called? Yes, excellent, Jessica. So this is a process called crossing over. It happens during anaphase two. Excellent. So again, this is a good thing to write down if you haven't, if you can't find this anywhere in your notes, or if you don't remember this concept. Crossing over is when they exchange just a little bit of their genetic material. As the chromosomes separate during anaphase two, genes are randomly separated into, and we already got this answer from Jessica earlier, four haploid daughter cells. So I'm gonna leave this on the screen for a little bit longer in hopes that those of you who don't recognize this information will write it down. Okay, last one. The gametes, 
which are blank, contain only one set of chromosomes, which is half of the parent's DNA. Remember, sexual reproduction requires blank to make offspring. So what are the gametes? What are our, what are gametes? What kind of cells are gametes? What kind of cells are gametes? There are a lot of people on this call, and the only person who's giving any answers is Jessica. Jessica, that is correct. They are haploid cells, but I'm looking for a specific type of cell. Sex cells, thank you, Nick. And what are our sex cells? They are sperm and egg. Oops, and I showed the other one. So go ahead and write down this sentence as well, these, these two sentences. The gametes, which are egg and sperm cells, contain only one set of chromosomes, which is half of the parent's DNA. Remember, sexual reproduction requires fertilization to make offspring. I'm gonna leave that on the screen for about 15 seconds in hopes that those of you who don't know this information will write these sentences down. So this process is pretty cool because it means that we have some genetic similarity to each of the previous generations. We have some, we have a lot of genetic similarity to our parents. And we, we even have some genetic similarity to our grandparents because of course our grandparents gave their genes to our parents. So your grandparents give half of their chromosomes, their DNA, to your parents, as we can see in this image. Grandma's blue and grandpa's green becomes mom's blue and green. Grandma's red and grandpa's blue become dad's red and blue, which means that your parents are made up of your grandparents' genetic material. Then randomly, half of your parents' genetic material becomes your genetic material. So you get half from your mom, half from your dad, and that's what becomes you. So you still have those same red and light blue and dark blue and green from your four grandparents. Okay. 
So genetics is the study of heredity. You should go ahead and write down that definition. It means passing on genes and traits from parents to offspring. Now we've got to keep in mind that genes code for specific proteins. And those proteins are what give us our traits. So genes code for proteins, which lead to traits like hair color, hair texture, blood type, eye color, tendency to grow or the amount of growth that will take place. All of this is determined by the proteins that are present and all of the proteins that are present are coded for by genes. So this is a relationship that we have to understand. We get our genetic material from our parents because of meiosis. That genetic material codes for proteins. Those proteins will determine our traits. And when I say traits, I mean all of our physical characteristics, but also the things that we can't see as well on a cellular level and the things that determine our personality. We get two copies of every gene, one from each parent. And each copy is called an allele. So an allele is just one copy of a gene. Of course, we all have two copies of each gene. So we should have two alleles for every trait. In order to represent alleles, we use letters. We use letters. So we're gonna talk a lot more about this. So because we get two copies of alleles, we get one from our father and one from our mother, we have to use two letters to represent them. A capital letter represents a dominant allele and a lowercase letter represents a recessive allele. The dominant allele, which is the capital letter, is stronger than the recessive allele because it means that if a dominant allele is present, then the dominant trait will be expressed. So if there is a dominant allele, if there is a capital letter, then you will more than likely express that dominant trait. Remember, each of these alleles is a gene. So each gene a co it codes for a trait. You get one gene from your dad, one gene from your mom. They each code for a trait. They code for the same trait, but different iterations of the trait. So the trait for or the genes for hair texture are coded for by the same genes from each of your parents. But one of your parents may have a gene that codes for a coarse, more curly hair texture. And Another parent may have a gene that codes for a smooth, straighter hair texture. So there are dominant alleles, which we represent with capital letters, and there are recessive alleles, which we represent with lowercase letters. Because of this, there are three possible combinations there can be a homozygous dominant combination, which we represent with two capital letters. There can be a homozygous recessive combination, which we represent with two lowercase letters. Or there could be a heterozygous combination, which is one of each, one capital letter and one lowercase letter.
the prefix homo means same. So homo zygous dominant means we've got two of the same alleles and they're both dominant. They're both the capital letters. Homo zygous recessive means we've got two of the same letters, but they're both recessive. They're both lowercase. Hetero as a prefix means different. So heterozygous means we've got two different alleles, one uppercase, one capital, and one lowercase. Okay. So in the chat, or you can unmute yourself. Let's use the the two letter definite or the two letter abbreviation. So homozygous dominant, just give me HD. Homozygous recessive, give me HR. Or homozyg or heterozygous, give me HE. So this first genotype right here, AA, what would we call that? Is that HD, HR, or HE? I've got two capital letters, so what should that be? Thank you, Alyssa. Excellent job. So this is HD. That's homozygous dominant. When I see two capital letters, that must be HD. What about capital C, lowercase c? What should this be? Recessive. I didn't hear that, Joseph. Can you say it a little louder? Recessive. Mm, this is not recessive. We, we do have one recessive allele, but we also have a dominant allele. So if I have one of each, what should that be called? H-E, heterozygous. Heterozygous, good. That should be H-E. Now, if I have two lowercase, meaning two recessive alleles, then what is that called? Thank you, Alyssa. This is H-R, homozygous, recessive. What about capital E, lowercase e? What's that? Homozygous recessive. Nope, it's not homozygous. Homo, of course, means same. So these are not the same. Hetero. Yes, this is hetero. Good. What about down here? Hetero? That's also hetero. Yeah, because they're different. See one of each, they're different, so that means it's got to be hetero. What about that next one? Homozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant, good. I've got two capital letters. What about this one? Heterozygous. Heterozygous, excellent. And then our last one? Homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive, excellent. Two lowercase letters, good. All right, so we're going to continue to practice with this, and you all will have more practice for your asynchronous assignment, but let's keep going. So what we were just looking at is called a genotype. It's when you use the letters to represent alleles. But there's another way to describe a trait, and it's called a phenotype. And this is when you provide a physical description. So, and you should definitely write these definitions down as well as the examples. There are two ways to describe traits. We can do that using the genotype, which uses letters to represent genetic alleles, or we can do that using a phenotype, which is just a basic physical description of the trait. Genotype is the letters, and your phenotype is the physical description.
So genotype and phenotype are both used to describe the same thing. But just in different ways. Okay, so here's some images to further represent this. Your G genotype is all about the genes. It's all about the DNA. We represent letters for alleles. And then your phenotype is all about the physical description. How can we describe things using more common adjectives? Now, this process becomes a bit more complicated when we consider that some traits are determined by multiple genes. Instead of just one gene, we, we're going to have multiple genes that determine these traits. And this is true for most of our traits. In fact, there are very few traits that are determined by only one gene. So because we've got many different genes that control these, these polygenic traits, we get a wide spectrum of outcomes. This is true of, sk of skin color. This is true of eye color. This is true of hair texture and hair color. This is true of height. This is true of uh, size. This is true of vocal tone, how deep or um, how high pitched is your voice. These are things that are coded for by genes, but they're coded for by multiple genes which gives us a wide range of outcomes. You don't have just two classes of people, one class of people who have high pitched voice and one class of people who have lower pitched voice. You've got a wide spectrum. You don't have just people with white skin and people with brown skin. You've got a, a, a spectrum. So these polygenic traits are more common and they are what give such a huge amount of diversity to how humans look. So you should definitely make sure you write down that definition of polygenic traits. Okay. So remember, we can describe traits in two different ways, both genoty genotypically, excuse me, and phenotypically. So this first one, curly hair, is that a genotypic description or a phenotypic description? That is phenotypic because it's a physical characteristic, curly hair. What about AA? If I've got a dominant allele, go ahead. Gino. It's Gino. What about greenish brown? Oops, that's me. What about XY? Gino. Genotypic. And what about spotted? Pheno. That's also pheno. Good. So when we have physical descriptions, curly hair, greenish brown, spotted. That's a phenotypic description, physical phenotype. 
when we have these genetic alleles that talk about where each gene is representing, we've got a genotypic description. All right, last slide, I think. So if I have two capital letters, what kind of genotype is that? Homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous? Two capital letters, is that HD, HR, or HE? That's HD, thank you, Nick. And so in the case of a heterozygous dominant genotype, I'm going to end up with the dominant trait. So purple is dominant to white, so I'm gonna end up with a purple trait. On the other hand, what about two lowercase p's? Is that HD, HE, or HR? Two lowercase p's, H D, H E, or H R. Sorry, I was speaking in late. Two lowercase, if I've got two lowercase p's, so I skip down to the third one here. Would that be H D H E or H R? It's not H E. Heterozygous means that they're different, but in this case, they're the same. They're both lowercase. So is it HD or is it HR? HR, good. And so in that case, I end up with the recessive trait, which is white in this case. So in order for me to get the recessive trait, I need to be homozygous recessive. I need to have both of my homozygous alleles. If I have both of, both of the dominant alleles, then I end up with the dominant trait. But what if I have one of each? What do you all think would happen if I have one dominant allele and one recessive allele? What's my trait going to be? Should it be dominant, which is purple? or should it be recessive, which is white? Mr. Rudd. Yes. Wouldn't it be both because it's the heterozygous one? Okay, this is heterozygous. And I like the way you're thinking, Joseph. There is a, There is a case that we will talk more about tomorrow in which you would end up with a blend of both. So you might end up with pink. But in this case, because this is just, we call this just um, basic dominance. It's gonna be purple. The purple, the capital P dominates the white. That's why we say it's dominant to the white. So if I have one of each, then the, the capital P, the dominant allele is going to take precedence. So I end up with purple. But I do like the way you're thinking and we're gonna talk more about which you just mentioned tomorrow. Okay, so in this case, we are given the phenotypes and I want you all to give me the genotype. It says that light hair is recessive to dark hair. So let's just use the letters H. The letters don't really matter. We can assign any letter. So let's use the letters H. If I end up, if I have dark hair, then there are two ways for me to get that. I can have two different genotypes to give me dark hair. What are they? Capital H and lowercase h, or capital H and capital H. 
excellent. I can have two capital H's, which is considered homozygous dominant. They're homo because they're the same, and they're both capital letters, so they're dominant. Or I could have heterozygous. Hetero means different. So one homo allele and one hetero, or I'm sorry, one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And then how could I get the light phenotype? How could I end up with the light phenotype? Thank you, Michelle. I should have two lowercase h's. I should be homo recessive. So homo because they're the same, recessive because they are lowercase. That's the only way that I can get um, light hair. It says light hair is recessive to dark hair. So light hair is my recessive trait. So you guys are going to practice much more with this in your asynchronous assignment and in your exit ticket for the day, both of which are posted. We've got 15 minutes left in the asynchronous portion of class. I definitely think you all need a lot of practice with this, and we're going to continue to move forward with it. So take your time and knock it out. I'll be here on mute if you need any help.
Okay, people, it is 120, so I hope everyone was able to make progress on the asynchronous assignment. If not, you have time to finish it before tomorrow, uh, and we will review some of the concepts we introduced tomorrow in that lesson. Hope you have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.